Hello, I'm Miles O'Brien, spaceflightnow.com at the Kennedy Space Center. A beautiful evening this evening. Take a look at this shot. The Space Shuttle Discovery on the pad, the sun shining through. Beautiful shot, but mission managers for NASA would prefer an empty launch pad. Unfortunately, in the course of the uh, countdown for the Space Shuttle Discovery on this important mission to the International Space Station, they detected a potentially hazardous hydrogen gas leak in a valve that causes the hydrogen to be vented out of the big orange external fuel tank. And when they could not get that particular valve to shut properly, they scrubbed this launch attempt. Listen to launch manager Mike Leimbach as he describes the problem. It is the system that, that helps maintain the pressure in the hydrogen tank as we're, <laughs> as we're filling up. Uh, as you know, as we put hydrogen in the tank, it does start to boil off and therefore it increases the pressure inside the external tank. We open this valve briefly to let some of that pressure out. That's a very standard thing. It happens several times during fueling. And uh, when we were going through that phase uh, with, the, with the hydrogen low in the tank, the temperature at the disconnect was relatively um, high. And when we opened the vent valve early in tanking, we didn't see any leakages at all. Um, it's when we got um, virtually completely full, 98% 90, full, and so now the temperature is lower and we went into this, the topping routine and opened that vent valve again, and now with the colder temperatures, we saw the leak. Um, again, it's, it's external to the, to the flight element. There's nothing leaking internal in the inner tank at all. It's when we open that vent valve to control the, the pressure in the tank that we see the leakage overboard at that vent valve. We have leak detectors up there, and we have uh, other instrumentation at that area just for this case. And uh, all the instrumentation picked it up. They all synced up time-wise to the to going into topping and so it was a very easy uh, it was a very easy thing to diagnose from a uh, we have a problem perspective um, we won't know what the problem is again until we get our hands on it joining me now to talk a little bit more about it reporter david waters astronaut leroy chow david first let's walk through the specifics of this a little bit you heard mike leinbach talking about how they've run into this before in the past they've cycled it before and this thing has closed and worked itself out. This is the biggest leak they've encountered in the first time he recalls that they've been unable to shut it. What, uh, what do you think happened out there? Well, I mean, it's something they weren't expecting. They said, you know, with the countdown that was so smooth, this is that one big issue that cropped up. But the bottom line is it's a fuel leak and they have to go inspect it. And they're still trying to figure out exactly all the details of the fuel leak. They said they won't know more until Friday exactly where that leak happened. But as we knew earlier in the day, Wednesday, they started filling up the tank and then they realized partially into filling it that they had a leak on the liquid hydrogen side. So at that point, they decided, okay, we're going to have to start draining it and scrub the launch for Wednesday. And it's just a part of it is it's just difficult to get there, get the, 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 the tank inerted, as it were, which means makes it safe for the people to be near it. And so this process just takes some time. You can't be near the tank when it is in that process. So nobody can be near until the tank is emptied out. And what they were doing is draining it before they can go back. And this is an area on the back side of the tank. They have to work on getting access to that area to get in and see what they've got going on. All right. and meanwhile, the other factor in all of this is that as time goes on, they get squeezed. This mission potentially could be squeezed into a shorter mission because of a series of constraints, primarily the fact that a Soyuz rocket is flying in a couple of weeks to the International Space Station, and the shuttle has to have come and gone before that because they don't want to have both vehicles there at the same time. They say that taxes the crew too much. So, uh, Leroy Child, let's talk about that for just a moment. Right. Suddenly that mission contracts. What, what do they lose? Well, they start losing mission days, as you said, and they lose EVAs. So, the, you know, the absolute EVA they have to do is the installation of the S6, the uh, last set of solar arrays. They can do that in one EVA, and then that, and that means the other three planned EVAs potentially get deferred to the station crew for later, later execution. Now, uh, if they do delay into Monday or Tuesday, it looks like they'll lose one EVA. If they have to delay further, they could lose, you know, all but the one. Okay, and then past Tuesday, they get into a point where we're getting into a much more significant delay, right. and that brings up another point, which was addressed in the briefing uh, not long ago. The mission management team chairman, Mike Moses, was asked about the aggressive schedule that NASA is attempting to pull off no less than 10 missions before the end of 2010, shuttle missions, before the retirement of the shuttle fleet. The question is, in the number one, can they do that, but perhaps more importantly, can they do it safely? There's a there's a big pace coming in front of us, but we don't really look at that because each one you take as you go, uh, and they work themselves out, right? We're not going to go too fast. We're not going to go too slow. We're just going to go at the pace we have to. And at the end of the day, 
um, it, we'll, we'll get there. So I still feel confident we'll be good to go throughout the, the manifest. It's getting really tight, no, no doubt about it. Um, but it's a little too hard to take the crystal ball and predict. You know, uh, we, we say that same thing. It's a current performance can't predict the future. So we've had some struggles here with this one, but that doesn't mean we're not going to go knock off four in a row that are perfect. So we'll just have to wait and see how it goes. Okay, so, Lee, right, let's talk about that point. They say sure. they won't go any faster or any slower right, than right. they need to, which right. is, you know, that's that's the whole goal in all of this. But naturally, there's pressure, right? Of course. Sure. And, you know, there it's a very aggressive schedule, 10 flights over the course of, you know, to the end of 2010. Uh, yeah, and especially in this climate, it's very aggressive. So there is pressure. There is pressure to launch. The Everybody feels it, but uh, Mike Moses said it best today. He said, look, we're not going to let that pressure get to us. We're going to do the right thing. We're not going to launch until we're ready to launch, until we're comfortable. And that's the right thing to do. Well, let's think about it for just a moment. Since Columbia, we've had hurricanes, yep. hailstorms, fuel sensors that have caused problems, just to name a few things that have caused. What we're talking about here is a program that is incredibly complex yes. and frankly is an, is an aging system. I mean, it's not, it's not correct to call the shuttles old because of the way they're, they're maintained, right. but it is an aging system overall. Right. Um, you have to wonder if that aggressive flight rate, which would be a flight rate that we haven't seen since Columbia, can really be sustained. Well, that's true. It's like we said before, it's very aggressive, and uh, you'd be right to say, you know, maybe we can't do that many flights, and maybe the program will be extended. I mean, who who knows? You know, a lot can happen in the next year and a half. All right. Maybe an extension is the thing to do. David Waters, inside the program, I suspect a lot of people are thinking a hard out, a hard date is not as safe as saying, hey, let's fly these 10 missions safely, or whatever the number of missions is. And maybe the, maybe the date moves a little down the road. What that does, though, is it delays the next great thing, Aries or whatever. It doesn't necessarily do that, and uh, that all depends on the budget coming out of Washington, because as the last NASA administrator, Mike Griffin, said, you know, you give NASA more money, and we can narrow that gap between manned spaceflight on the shuttle and manned spaceflight in the Constellation program. So it is kind of up to the money, essentially. All right, no bucks, no Buck Rogers, no bucks, no bucking the schedule, right? Exactly. David Waters, Leroy Chow, we will be here monitoring this very closely. Stay with spaceflightnow.com all throughout this. As soon as we have additional information on when there might be a launch of the Space Shuttle Discovery, we'll bring it to you and it will, of course, bring you full and complete web live streaming coverage whenever that launch occurs. Miles O'Brien at the Kennedy Space Center, spaceflightnow.com.